Let us understand what is neutralization curve today. Neutralization curve, this term we use in case of acid-base titrations and thus it is also called as acid-base titration curve also. It is a plot, means it is a graph. So when I say graph, it will have x-axis and y-axis. Now what is there on the y-axis? The y-axis has pH of the solution and x-axis has the volume of the titrant added. Titrant means the solution which is there in the burette. Okay and I have a sample in the flask. If my sample is acidic in nature in burette I will take a base. If my sample is basic in nature in burette I will take some acid. Okay this is how by neutralization we understand the burette reading and from that burette reading we further uh, perform the calculations with the help of factor and we determine the concentration of sample which was present in this flask. This neutralization curve can be plotted or can be determined experimentally by understanding the pH at various stages during the titration by potentiometric method means with the help of pH meter or potentiometer. This curve helps in selection of suitable pH indicator for the titration. The term equivalence point now we are quite aware of. It is a point in the titration where stoichiometric amount of reactant has been added. Means 1, m, 1 molar or 1 mole of HCl reacts with 1 mole of NaOH. And thus the product which is formed that is also 1 mole. So this reaction is chemically balanced reaction. We know 1 mole of HCl is reacting with NaOH. 1 mole of NaOH. So that means 1 is to 1 is the stoichiometric ratio of this particular reaction. Okay. So this means what? The reaction is complete. In other words, it is a point on the titration curve where the slope of curve is steepest. So suppose in the, I have in this flask some acid. So initial pH is acidic, quite low. And as I go on adding some base to this acidic solution, the pH of the flask solution will increase. So slowly, slowly it will increase with each addition of the uh, solution from the tight print. Okay. So this is how it will increase and slowly the curve will become like this. So the steepest part of the curve is this. Okay. And this point is called as the equivalence point. The pH of the final solution when both the reactant or the sample and the titrant they have completed the neutralization reaction. The pH value at end point depends upon relative strength of acid and bases which are being titrated. So acid could be a strong acid and it can be titrated with strong base or acid could be a weak acid which is titrated against strong base uh, or the base could be a weaker base which can be titrated against strong acid and we can have weak acid weak base combination also for the titration. So depending on the strength of this acid and base the salt which is formed that nature of the salt and its ability to undergo hydrolysis or take up H plus and OH minus from the water that will give us the idea of the pH of the final solution or pH at the equivalence point. Neutralization curve for strong acid and strong base. So strong acid like HCl and strong base like NaOH if they are titrated we get a salt. NaCl and water. So this is a curve where on x axis we have volume of titrant, y axis is pH and stoichiometry of this reaction is 1 is to 1 we have just now seen and the curve of this reaction looks like this. This means what? With each addition slowly there is very slow increase in pH with each addition of the base which is there in the burette.
or alkali alkaline solution which is there in the burette strong acid strong base titrations usually have an equivalence point around 7 why because the salt which is formed no the salt is neutral and this is water so this is the final product at the equivalence point na has also come up from the strong base cl has come up from strong acid they both have completely dissociated because they are stronger in nature and thus these both do not have tendency to react further with any of these from the water right so water equilibrium is not at all disturbed okay so neither do anions have any tendency to combine with h plus nor do cations have tendency to combine with oh minus of water and thus equilibrium between h plus and oh minus of water is not disturbed and solution remains neutral hence an indicator which shows color change at this range should be chosen so you can see here at this ml see here the till this volume of the base slowly ph was increasing with each 0.5 ml of the base from the burette right but the next extra drop from the burette has increased the ph maybe from 3 to 12 sudden this is called as sudden increase or sharp increase in ph just by addition of a single drop why this happened because initially in the flask i had hcl so all h plus h plus h plus ions were there in the flask slowly when i was adding noh drop by drop so each oh minus was neutralizing each h plus and thus the ph was initially increasing very slowly but once all h plus ions are gone they have finished they are neutralized the next extra drop of noh ha has made the solution alkaline okay and thus the ph has raised up to 12 and thus we have to select such indicators which will show color change in this ph range so bromo bromocresol green shows color change in this range so we can use this indicator for such titrations of strong acids and strong bases now neutralization of weak acid and strong base so here you can see the slight change in the neutralization curve as that of the strong acid strong base which we have seen just now at the beginning this weak acid is in equilibrium with itself so let us take simple example of acetic acid and strong base naoh so when they both react with each other sodium acetate is formed right so since it is in equilibrium at the beginning the beginning ph is higher than that of the strong acid right because it's a weaker acid weak acid strong base titration reach their equivalence point at a ph greater than 7 so if we compare this with the neutralization curve of strong acid strong base which was looking like this so if you see this portion and this portion it is quite different now why is that so because acetic acid is weak acid and naoh is a stronger acid so the difference in ph with each addition of 0.5 ml of naoh will be more and why this ph at the equivalence point is greater than 7 because if you look at this salt this part has come from weaker acetic acid and this part has come from strong base naoh since it has come from strong base naoh it doesn't have any tendency to take up oh minus but definitely this can take up h plus from water okay everywhere there is water in the solution so from water h plus will be taken up by this 
and thus the H plus ion concentration will be reduced and OH minus ion concentration will be increased in the solution and therefore towards equivalence point the pH is always greater than 7 here. The change in pH is seen between 7 and 11 for weak acid strong base and thus indicators which usually have pH range in this 7 and 11 those are selected and these are some of the examples phenolphthalein, thymolphthalein and thymol blue. This pH, this pH at the equivalence point can theoretically also be calculated using this formula. Okay, so where this C is the concentration of the salt in molar. PK, you all know what is K, that is dissociation constant and PK is negative log of dissociation constant. KW also you all know and thus PKW is negative log of KW. Okay, so theoretically also the pH at equivalence point can be calculated and it can be calculated potentiometrically also. Example, neutralization curve for strong acid and weak base titration. So let us take example of HCl plus ammonium hydroxide where the salt form is NH4Cl okay and water. And now if you see the neutralization curve for this if I take this base in the flask okay if I take this base in the flask and acid in the burette then the initial pH would be higher okay so we can imagine it around 11 okay so from here the titration will begin and the curve will look like this where at this point maybe Around this point there will be half neutralization and you can say this point which is towards the acidic pH range okay that would be the equivalence point in case of strong acid weak base neutralization. So at the beginning the weak base is in equilibrium with itself and thus the beginning pH is lower than that of the strong base. Strong acid weak base titrations reach their equivalence point at pH less than 7. Now why less than 7? Because this salt again NH4Cl this has come up from the strong acid and this has come up from the weak base and thus not Cl but NH4 will have tendency to take up OH- minus from the water this water okay thus from water OH minus will be reduced and more of H plus will remain in the water and therefore the equivalence point near to uh, equivalence point therefore pH of the equivalence point is lesser than 7 in case of strong acid weak base titration. The pH falls rapidly between 7 to 3 if I do this uh, in the reverse way that if suppose if I take acid that is the strong acid in the flask and weak base in the burette if I do it in that way then the neutralization curve will be like this where we can say that this is the equivalence point this is maybe 7. Okay, so equivalence point is lesser than 7 in that case. Okay. Methyl red, methyl orange, bromophenol blue can be used for these purposes. And yes, theoretically also we can calculate this pH using this formula. Pkb plus 
half pc okay meaning of all the terms is exactly same as i have explained on the earlier slide okay concentration of salt this is the dissociation constant of base and then we have this kw example is neutralization curve for weak acid weak base weak acid weak base titrations are really very difficult because each solution is in equilibrium even the weak acid and weak base both so example we can take up here is ch3cooh plus nh4oh right so these both uh, will have tendency to combine with the H plus and OH minus of the water which is formed here. Okay, so CH three COO NH four. Okay, so this is the salt which is formed. That is ammonium acetate, and both of them can accept or try to take up the H plus and OH minus from the water. So it depends on the dissociation constant. of acids and bases and thus theoretically we can calculate the ph at the equivalence point in this way okay and the curve if you see the curve suppose i am taking acid in the uh, flask okay so suppose this is 1 2 3 4 and so on okay so since it is a weaker acid the ph will be quite okay so if i see the neutralization curve it is like this so what does this mean the ph of the equivalence point is around 7 it is around 7 okay this will be around 7 the chief feature of this curve is that change of ph near the equivalence point and during the whole of the neutralization curve is very gradual so here we cannot identify we cannot distinguish the sudden change or sharp change in ph okay it cannot be identified with the help of any indicator with the help of any color change therefore a mixed indicator is preferred which exhibits a sharp color change over very limited ph range so example is neutral red methylene blue mixed indicator which can be used but when we have weak acid and weak base titration it is advisable to use the ph meter or to carry out the titration potentiometrically i hope the concept is clear to you if you have any doubt you can always get connected to me through the comment section or you can email me your queries thank you have a nice day